hear you. Good morning. Sir, would you get, sir, uh, give us your name and your seat number, please. James White, 440-911. All right, sir. My name is Pearl Wise. To my left is Mr. Roche. To my right is Mr. Freeman. We comprise your panel this morning. Uh, let me explain the process. On uh, recent information into the record, afterwards, we're going to conduct an interview with you, uh, starting with Mr. Freeman. And after we conclude with our questions, we're going to hear from the board and we're going to ask for his input. I see we have some uh, we have some visitors here. You have uh, Deborah Parker, your sister. She's going to be speaking in support. And Miss Deborah Elois, uh, your friend, who is not going to be speaking. <clears throat> Also in support, we have Shannon Parker, your niece, not speaking. Tashika Parker, a niece, is not speaking. And we have Walter Taylor, your brother, who's not speaking. We also have some opposition, uh, and who's going to be speaking at this hearing. The victim is going to be speaking, Ms. Cynthia, as well as the uh, coordinator of the Victim Assistance Program will also be speaking. And after we've heard all the testimony, we're going to give you an opportunity to make a statement. Tell us whatever you want us to know, and then we'll render our decision. And then you understand the process. Yes, ma'am. Begin uh, by reading the information for the record. Your name is listed as James White. Mr. White, you don't have a middle name, huh? Line L. L. James L. James L. White. Okay, James L. White. Okay. The DOC number is 440911. Your date of birth is listed as August the 29th of 1957. You're listed as a first felony offender. Your current charge is forcible rape, and your sentence is 35 years. Your parole date, August the 1st of 2021. You do not earn good time. And your full term date is June the 7th of 2035. That sounds about right, sir. That sounds correct? Yes, ma'am. All right, would you answer, Mr. Freeman? Good morning, Mr. White. Good morning. First of uh, uh, how old are you, Mr. White? 64. Okay, and how long have you served on this offense? Oh, uh, I got a question and, uh, 99 and been down here ever since 23 years yes sir. okay uh what's your educational level mr white well right now uh, i'm in school right now uh um uh, been in school for about almost six months and uh my level right now is like i say it's more say seven seven grade Trying to work on uh, your education. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, Mr. White, one thing about uh, I read your case file and um, looked and looked and looked, could not find any statements from you. Uh, just give me a brief statement on what happened and what led to this. Okay. Uh... Well, uh, I was in, ended up on drugs, uh, and, you know, I made some bad choices, uh, and it costed me. And uh, those uh, situations that happened to me uh, called my action, what I did. And, uh, um, I regret everything that I have done. Uh, I know I can't change my past, but I can change my future. <laughs> and uh, I learned that by being incarcerated and had time to think. Okay. Um, so, uh, how do you think your actions has affected this victim? <laughs> she was 11 years old at the time this happened. Yes, um, it did. Uh, sorry. Uh, allow myself to, you know, get uh, drugs. And 
one thing led to another. I'm deeply, deeply sorry that it happened. Uh, I, I, deep down in my heart, I, I am deeply sorry that I did what I did. How long did this go on? Um, I mean, about, about a week. Years? Uh, week or two. Month. No, no months. About a week, two. Uh, a week or two? That's all. And the, the rest report doesn't agree with that. Uh, it's like it went on for quite a while. Uh, how many children do you have? I have three, three boys. Okay, do you have any contact with your children? No. Uh, one of them is in, uh, out of town in Michigan, and the other one currently locked up. I uh, see so you've taken a lot of classes. Yes. Uh, your risk score is low. You, you have a good work history. You have two write-ups, which is, is good for someone that has served that long. What would be your transition plan if we were to grant your parole today? Uh, first of all, I want to get out. Uh, I'm going to be on disability because of my legs uh, and my hepatitis C. So I want to be able to uh, get disability and maybe see can I find me a job working, you know, three or four hours, you know, a day. Who would you live with? Uh, my sister went to a house in Glen Oaks. Uh, my, my mother left for us. Where, where's the house? In Glen Oaks. Glen Oaks. You think that's going to pass all the restrictions? Yes, that sir. That a place for uh, tax offender? Yes, sir. Okay. I know they have a lot of schools and daycares in Glen Oaks. Right. Uh, you know, it, I, I read, like I said, I've read everything. I've read the victims' letters and statements. You know, it's greatly affected her life. I mean, you know, when you do something to this extent, you know, you take away a lot from them. Um, and, and it just doesn't go away. I mean, it, it's, it's not something that's going to go away. And uh, and it in reading her letter, it, it's very, very in-depth. And, and you can tell how much it still bothers her today as to what everything happened to her as a child. It shouldn't happen to a child. Uh, you have strong law enforcement opposition. Um, the DA said that you avoided a life sentence by taking this sentence. So, um, you know, we, we will we'll look into all of that and take that into consideration. Uh, I have no further questions, Ms. Uh, Madam Chairman. Anyone else have Thank any questions? You. Mr. Go ahead. Mr. White. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning to you. Mr. Freeman asked you a question and you didn't answer this question. What happened? Why are you incarcerated right now? Okay, I'm incarcerated because of um, sex charge that I've done um, with the victim. Um, Who was the victim? It's been so long, I, I really forgot the name, you know, but uh, I'm, I, I truly want to say this. What, what relationship was the victim to you? Well, uh, I was married to her mother. So uh, just that thought? Yes, that's correct. That's correct. And what did you do? Well, um, uh, I touched her, you know, and you know, uh, never, never had sex. Just, just touched her, you know. Uh, Mr. White, I got, Mr. White, I got, Mr. White. Yes, sir. You can stop. 
Okay. Stop right there because uh, I'm not going to get the truth from you this morning, so you can stop right there. Madam Chairman. That's what I was saying. Um, Juan, is there anything you want to share with us about Mr. White? <clears throat> Nothing other than what the board has already uh, have in front of them. Um, he's minimum, medium security custody here at the institution. He works in our chapel. Uh, he's been here since uh, 2007 and only had two disciplinary reports since being here. Uh, his evaluation from his work supervisors uh, rates him with positive attitude and good work ethic. Thank you, thank you, Warden. Well, this time we are, we are here from uh, Ms. Deborah Parker. Yeah. Yes, man. What do you want us to know? I want y'all to know that he got support from his family and his friends, and that he is really a good brother. He he was the head of the house, you know, when he was here, and I know what he did was wrong, and. I hope y'all take that in consideration, you know, that he was on drugs and that, you know, I miss my brother, you know, he's a good person. He never been in trouble until this, till this happened. And I just need him here with me, you know, my mom didn't pass, all my sisters, my brothers, and I need him, you know, and I will make sure he should stay on the right track if y'all would give him another chance. Thank you, Ms. Parker. May we hear from Ms. Uh, Ms. Deborah Lois? I'm sorry, you're not speaking. I'm so sorry. Okay, but well, that concludes all of our speakers for today. I mean, on the support side. Now we will hear from Ms. Cynthia. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. What do you want us to know, Ms. Cynthia? We're so appreciative of you participating today. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Well, I wanted you guys to know that just like you guys heard in my letter, that it has this has been a traumatic experience for me. It has um definitely tremendous change my life. Um I did hear what Mr. White said. Those things were not true when he said that he just touched me. I I know he knows and God knows exactly those things that he did. And like I tell people, I have a visual memory. Um, because of this traumatic experience, I have been diagnosed with fibromyalgia. And so it's a chronic pain condition that you get if you experience something traumatic or if something happens. So that's something I have to deal with for the rest of my life. I constantly have nightmares about what he did. I still uh, visualize him, you know, chasing me with a knife. Always, I'm always still on guard, looking behind my shoulders, you know, wondering if the next person is going to do the same thing to me. I'm still afraid to be in the room with other um, uh, men, um, like I said, you know, the day that Mr. James did that to me is something that has really changed my, changed my life. I can say today I'm a much stronger person, but emotionally and physically, I'm still traumatized. I still find myself crying on multiplication, even just knowing and being here at this hearing. Just, Caused me to be emotional. Um, not being able to know. I'm, I'm thankful for you guys' opportunity to allow me to have my voice to be heard. And I just want him to know that he really, when he did that to me, he really ruined, ruined my life. Like I said, I'm still afraid if he's 
release that, you know, he would come back and do those actions of actually saying if I told anyone that he would kill me, I'm I I still look, I'm always on the lookout. The only clarity that I know that he's not out now is me actually sitting here, you know, looking at him on the camera to be able to just see him sitting there. So I know. Thank you. Thank you for your bravery. Thank you for your voice this morning. We really appreciate hearing from you. All right. We were here from Hi, uh, Julie Duarte with the Lead Damage Outreach Program. I will be uh, reading uh, Ms. Cynthia's letter that she had written to the board on behalf of her, so this is from her point of view. Um, when I was a juvenile, I, Cynthia Marie Henyard, was raped on several occasions by my stepfather at the time, Mr. James Lionel White. I don't remember when the incident first occurred, but I remember him kissing me, touching my private areas, and showing me pornography. He, he wrote me to tell me not to tell anyone that it was between me and him, and if I told anyone, he would kill me. He would do all these sexual acts with my mother and siblings in the next room, sometimes even in the same room while they were asleep. He would wake me up out of my sleep to do these things, and I would tell him to stop because it was hurting. He told me that my body was his, and I was not able to do anything or go anywhere uh, without him keeping a close eye on me and knowing where I was. I used to always be scared to be around him, not knowing if he would actually kill me because he used to carry a knife around with him. He would pace the floor back and forth and keep out the people. He would act like a person on drugs, and I believe that he actually did do drugs. I remember the incident where he and my mom got into an argument. We were at his mother's house, and my mom told him she was leaving him. I remember my siblings and I were halfway up the street when he came up behind Mama, put his hand around her neck, and dragged her back to the house. During this time, my mom had a nervous breakdown. My siblings and I had a witness that. I still remember him convincing us that our mom was sick and she needed help, and the ambulance then coming to pick her up, take her to Greenwald Springs Mental Hospital. We had to stay in a hotel with our stepfather, James White, and the rape got worse. My mom still didn't know it was a change in me or what, was, what he was doing to me, and even worse, he, she was in a mental hospital and we were left in his care. I remember when my youngest brother was born. I've always loved children, but I was even more excited this time. But when my mom went to the hospital, Mr. James told me that in order for me to hold or play with my brother, I had to have sex with him and do what he said to do, or I couldn't play with his son. Because I like, loved my baby brother and didn't want to mess with any, didn't want him to mess with any of my other siblings, I cried and let him continue his sex acts on me. Every day, and even now, I have to live with the trauma of his actions. There have been times where I think I've built the courage to tell someone I would end up getting scared and keeping it all in. I'm pretending everything was fine and that I was happy, but deep down inside, I wasn't. I couldn't understand why it all happened to me, and I thought that it was my fault this happened to me. I remember saying to myself, I gotta get the courage to tell someone. I remember one day asking my mom if I could spend the night at a friend's house. Mr. White wasn't around, so she said yes. I finally felt a little peace until nighttime came when my mom and Mr. White were knocking on the door saying that I had to come home. I hid behind the front door, mounting silently, begging my friend and her mother to let me stay, and they did. They both wondered why I didn't want to go home, and I eventually broke down from the things that, I, that had happened to me and showed my friend. She then showed it to her mom. They called the police and child protective services and kept me at their place until, the, until help arrived. That day was the day that saved my life. When they confronted my mom with what was going on, I don't believe she even believed that he was molesting me. I remember having to go to, go to the hospital to do a rape kit and lab work. I remember James was not allowed to come back to the apartment complex, and if someone saw him, they had to report it. And I remember the day he was arrested. Moments before his arrest, I was outside playing with someone, uh, spotted him going inside our apartment building. The next thing I knew, police and child protective services were knocking on the door. They searched the apartment and found him hiding in the bathroom closet. I remember the child protective service people telling me to go pack some clothes. I had to go with them. And I asked if my siblings to come. They said they would come late. They would come get them later, but they never did. I remember going down to get my statement on a reporter. I remember someone telling me Mr. White had confessed to raping me. I was placed in a group home, but I was too young to stay there permanently, so it was a temporary place until they found me a foster home. During this time, I would have nightmares. I kept saying, I kept saying I shouldn't have said anything because he was going to find me and kill me. The day I left the group home, I cried. The girl there became the big sisters I never had. I was placed in a foster home. I remember my social worker, Miss Neal. She was really nice to me. My foster mom, Miss Mary, was nice at first, but then changed, restricting what I could eat and say. I would have to go to group counseling for the trauma I experienced, juvenile court, and I had to have supervised visits to even see my mother, siblings, and dad. 
I remember the judge telling my mom she was unfit, she was an unfit mother, that she didn't need to get me back, and they were looking for a permanent foster home for me. While staying with my foster family, I was able to have weekend visits with my mom under the conditions of having of me having my own room and no men allowed. It was during this time that I believe my mom talked to her godmother, Miss Gracie, and she said she would help my mom with me. So instead of saying this is too permanently, I went to live with her. Miss Gracie was nice at first, but I would begin to get whippings for simple things. I would blame the things I didn't do. And if I said I didn't do it, they would say I did. I would get whipped so badly I would be left with welts and bruises. I wouldn't think anyone would believe me, so I kept it so bad. So I kept it to myself. I remember the time changing, and it would still be dark outside in the morning. And Miss Gracie would tell me I couldn't go to school until the sun came up. I would be getting late. I would be late to school uh, several days. My body began to get used to the whippings. I continued to endure this until my case was closed during my junior year of high school, and I went to live with my mother. All the things that I've endured in my life still affects me. It is something that I will have to live with. I'm not sure what my purpose in life is or why God spared my life, but I'm thankful to be alive and that I'm learning to practice self-love. Thank, thank you, board members, and thank you, Cynthia, for entrusting me to be one of your seat. Thank you. All right, Mr. White, at this time, we're ready to hear your statement, your final statement. Well, I made a mistake in my life, one that I deeply regret, because I hurt a lot of people. I hurt the victim. I hurt their family. I hurt my family and my friends. I'm sorry that I did it. And I ask that somewhere in their heart that they can find forgiveness because I'm not the same person that when I first came to jail, I'm a totally different person. Uh, it's really, I, I just, I'm just so sorry. I, I, it's nothing I can do. Uh, I, I can't, but I, but I can do better, and I have done better. And I have, since I've been uh, incarcerated, I have been, you know, rehabilitating myself and and doing all the things that I that I need to do to help me. And before before I can be honest with this board, I have to be honest with myself. Uh, I am. I am sorry, and I am asking for forgiveness, and I am asking for another chance, and not, a, not just to prove to the board, but to, to prove to my family and the victim that I am not the same person no more. And that's just my statement. I have anything else to say. Uh, God bless you and thank you. Right, thank you. I, I do want to put on the record that you have completed all four phases of the sex offender treatment program. Is that correct? That's correct. I think you finished it up on 10-3 of 2016. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. On the record. Is the panel ready to vote? Yes, Mr. Freeman. Okay, uh, Mr. White, you said something in your closing statement that's kind of sticking with me. Uh, first off, I don't think you're honest with yourself yet. Uh, there's a lot more that went on with this little girl than you, you want to admit. And until you can admit what you have done, I don't, I don't think you can be rehabilitated. Due to strong victim opposition and strong law enforcement opposition, I vote to deny. Thank you, Mr. 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 White, I'm gonna vote the same way and for the same reasons as Mr. Freeman, but I'm gonna add another statement to what he is saying. This victim is still physically, mentally, and emotionally affected by the crime that you committed against this individual. And as long as this victim's life is affected in such a dramatic way, I don't see where I can vote for you. But the most important thing is, and you mentioned it in your closing statement, you have to come to terms and be honest with yourself. And maybe next time you can be honest with this panel. My vote is to deny. Okay. Mr. Mr. White, at this point, you've had two votes to deny. I concur with my colleagues. My vote is denied. 
uh, for the reasons stated, and also I believe you need to, uh, to undergo uh, some abuse evaluation and, and to see where you're at with, in terms of drugs. So that today, sir, your parole has been denied. And I want to thank everyone uh, for participating in this process. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, this concludes our business at HUD. We thank you all again for the excellent accommodations. Substance abuse, I love it. It's like they never get bored of saying that. Thanks, Ms. Wise. I think that's really what he needs. He needs a substance abuse evaluation. He's had two write-ups in how many years? Uh, no, he doesn't need substance abuse evaluation. What he needs to do is stay in prison for the rest of his life. But he won't. He will get out. Now he got a 31 year sentence, which is, which is basically is remarkable. Uh, we don't see that in, in Louisiana. We see five years, six years, seven years at most, you know, the most, at most 20. And yeah, it's interesting, I guess. I guess the judge uh, and the DA actually did something, so it's just something right in this case. You, you know, he did the classic roach thing, the classic manipulation thing. Uh, oh, I don't, you know, Miss Wise asked the, asked the, oh, no, no, it was actually um, not Miss Wise, it was Pete Freeman, who's also not a great interviewer. And he asked, you know, a few questions. He just, the guy got around. It, and then, thank goodness, Mr. Roche is there and says he didn't answer the questions. And he's acting like nothing happened. He didn't even know the name of her, who was just like some random person. Then he comes out, it's your. He's like, it had to be pulled out of him. Oh, it was my wife's daughter. So your stepdaughter. Yes. Oh, and he didn't even remember her name. Okay. And then the truth comes out, the, the victim, the survivor speaks. And she speaks and she delivers the hammer blow. And you hear how it has completely altered her life, completely. And thank goodness there's the victim's advocate, I wish we could see it more often, but she then delivers that handwritten speech, which was just perfectly done and you see that it's more than just the physical abuse he was literally just in the next room with the family in the next room and he's he's putting fear into her and control evil the evil that it would take to do that the pure satanic evil if you tell anything, I'm going to do this and this and this. She's 11 years old. And he gets up here and he lies. Oh, yeah, nothing really happened. Uh, you know, Mr. Mr. O'Shea just cuts him off. He's still locked up. Thank goodness. But he will get out. What was his, what was his date? 30, 20, 30 something. She's still having nightmares. It's just, yeah, I don't think you went to trial. He just took a plea deal, it seems. So we don't have, don't have information. If you're wondering what date this is, I mean, I'll put it in the description, but this was in 2022. Um, 